there's really no uniform definition of so-called high-risk acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So one cannot uh, define high-risk leukemia just based on immunophenotype or genotype, or for that matter, based on the early treatment response as measured by minimal residual disease. So we found out that you really need to take into multiple factors, including presenting clinical features, like the age, present the white blood cell count. You need to take into account of the immunophenotype, whether T cell or early T cell precursor ALL or BALL. On top of that, you need to take into account of how treatment, early treatment response and as measured by minimal residual diseases. This is still not enough. You, you really have to account for the available treatment because some very bad high-risk leukemia in the past are now become highly curable if you have the right treatment. So, so therefore, to define high-risk leukemia, we have to combine all these factors. On top of that, we need to account for the germline genotype. The gene that we inherited can affect not only the development of leukemia in the first place, and also would determine whether the patient more likely to develop drug resistance or develop the long-term side effect. Therefore, to define a high-risk leukemia, we need to combine all these factors together. And this factor, this factor play a different role in different subtypes of leukemia. So it is a complicated matter. So therefore, in my talk, I, I try to, to, to give some example to the audience that we have to combine all these factors to define the high-risk leukemia, which have important prognostic and therapeutic implications. Yes, there, there are many studies showing that there are many genotypes are actually very heterogeneous. For example, Philadelphia chromosome positive, no, for example, Philadelphia chromosome-like ALL is a totally heterogeneous disease. So you really need to do, know the cooperative mutations, and then the, you, know, you need to know the available treatment, you need to know how they respond to treatment. So you need to take all these factors to decide how to treat the individual patients. Yeah, in the next five years, I'm, I'm sure everybody will use uh, clinical features plus genotype and the minimal residual disease as measured by flow cytometry or PCR and, uh, and then to use it uh, for the risk direct therapy. On top of that, I hope people will start measuring the germline variants or the polymorphisms and use this information to further refine the treatment. So I think that, first of all, uh, to define genotype, we should not just use conventional chromosome analysis. We really need to do RNA sequencing, not only to identify driver mutation and also important cooperative mutations to precisely uh, identify the genotypes, and we also, everybody must have minimal residual disease measurement because just by doing that, you will automatically improve the outcome of the overall patients. And finally, we need to know the germline of, of our patients in order to use the optimal treatment uh, for the patients. Mm -hmm.